let's look at substituting values into our algebraic expressions. So if you're given the values of certain pronumerals or rather variables, we call them variables because they could change depending on the question and time to time. So, um, certain, so for example, have a look on the board guys. I've got a equals to four. So a certain question might give you the value of a and they say a is four. And they might also give you a value of another um, pronumeral or variable um, like b, b could equal to three. Another one, x, x could equal to 25 and another one y, y could equal to minus 8 or negative 8. So, like the example on the board guys, specific questions would give you the values of different variables and if they give you those, you can substitute those values into the given expressions, the given algebraic expressions and finally come up with the final outcome which is simplified using these substitutions. Alright guys, so let's try the questions. Uh, watch very carefully because they need a bit of um, uh, knowledge of signs and multiplications, additions, all these technical things have to be done in the correct order. So watch very closely. Question 1, it says if A is 4 and B is 3, evaluate A, B. So they give you the values of A and B, don't they? And they say we'll find the value of A, B. Now A, B guys is A times B, isn't it? A multiplied by B is A, B. So I'm going to replace my A with the given value of A and B with the given value of B. So I actually left the A blank and the B blank. So I kind of got rid of the A and B so I can replace them with their values. So see how A is 4? So this value here, which I left blank, I'm going to replace it with the 4 because they tell us A is 4. And this empty value here is for the place of B. And I'm going to replace it with 3 because they tell us that b is 3. So now we've replaced a and b with the values, and then we can just do the multiplication. So what's 4 times 3, guys? Everyone should be able to tell me it's going to be equal to 12. So that would be the final outcome. So it's much more simplified because we've got the given values. So that's question 1. Let's look at question 2. If a equals to 3 and b equals to 5, evaluate a squared plus b. Yes, guys? So they give you the expression a squared plus b, and they also give us the values of a and b. So this expression here, a squared plus b, I'm going to actually, again, replace the a's and b's with the given values. So I've left them blank. Yeah, we're going to fill them in. So the square is still there, and we're going to square the value of a, aren't we? So starting with a, this blank space is the value, uh, sp blank space for a. And what is a? A is 3. So they tell you that A is 3, we're going to replace that little blank space with 3, which represents A. And then finally, the blank space over here represents B. So B, they tell you it's 5, so I'm going to replace it with 5. And then now we just have to simplify. What's 3 to the power of 2, guys, or 3 squared? We should know that 3 squared is same as 3 times 3, which gives us 9. So 3 squared is 9, and then we have the 5 following. So what's 9 plus 5? that will give us 14 and that would be the final answer. So work step by step guys, don't try to rush everything in one step. Write out your working like this so it's nice and logical and then come up with your final answer at the end. Make sense guys? Question 3. If a equals to 6 and b equals to 2, evaluate 2a minus 5b. So again they give you a and b and we have to simplify the expressions with the given values. So I've written down 2a minus 5b and then I've replaced, uh, sorry, I left the a and the b blank so I've got rid of them so I can replace them with the right values. So for a guys, this blank space, I'm going to replace it with the 6 that they tell us in the question, yeah? And this b, I'm going to replace it with the 2. Now I've included the multiplication signs because now we're going to insert numbers and the multiplication signs will give us guidelines of what to do. So 5b is 5 times b and I replaced the b with the 2, didn't I? So now let's do the multiplication first because remember guys, the order of operations tell us that multiplication comes first. Um, so I'm going to do the multiplications individually first. What's 2 times 6? Should be 12 and 5 times 2 should be 10. So now we can do the, uh, sorry, the subtraction because we've done all the multiplication. So what's 12 minus 10? Simply 2. So that would be the final answer. All right, question 4. If a equals to negative 2 and b equals to negative 3, evaluate negative a squared b. 
So this is getting a bit more complicated because we've got a lot of negative numbers involved, isn't it? So watch very closely, guys. So negative a squared plus b, I'm going to be utilizing my brackets because I don't want it to interfere with too many of my negatives. So using, using brackets is a very good idea to make your answer nice and precise. So these brackets, this bracket is the value of a. See how negative I brought out the front? Because the square, guys, is only for the a, yeah? a squared, the square is only for the a, and the negative is just out the front like that. So the negative, you keep it out the front. a, I'm going to leave it as a blank space so I can fill it in later. And then the square I put there where the, for the value of a. Now, if there's nothing in between, it means multiply, doesn't it? So I just inserted my multiplication sign, and b, I just left blank. And I'm also going to use a bracket so I can just kind of insert it straight in and differentiate between the values. So, starting with a, this is the blank space for a. Let's insert our value that they give us in the question. It's minus 2 or negative 2, isn't it? And then this is the blank space for b. So let's insert our value of b, which they tell us is negative 3, isn't it? So I've inserted all the values now. I've replaced all the a and b's with the right values. Now let's simplify the values. So. Because we have brackets, guys, you have to do what's in the brackets first. So we're going to do negative 2 squared. Now, guys, negative 2 is negative 2 multiplied by negative 2. The square means negative 2 times negative 2. Now, a double negative would make a positive, and we know that 2 squared is 4. So keep the neg this negative out front, but this one here simply becomes positive 4. Can you see that, guys? So negative 2 times negative 2, double negative becomes positive, so it's simply positive 4. And then this negative, you just bring it back down. And then we have the negative 3, don't we? So now let's multiply further. What's negative 4 times negative 3? Now again, we have a double negative, which makes positive. So all we need to do is 4 times 3, which simply makes 12. That is the answer, guys. So the key thing here, guys, is to be very, very specific and careful with your negative numbers. So a good way to do that is using brackets like I did there. All right, question five. If a is negative one and b is negative two, evaluate a squared minus b squared. Again, we've got some square numbers involved and we also have quite a few negative numbers as well. So watch very closely. So we know that a squared minus b squared, um, I can just leave the blank spaces here. And again, can you see that I'm using brackets? Because the square, I want to square the whole thing inside the brackets. So brackets is a good idea to use. So the a I replaced with this empty space and the b I replaced with this empty space and use brackets. Always use brackets, guys. So what's a? They tell us it's negative one. So I'm going to put my negative one in the value, place value of a and the negative two, which is b, I'm going to put into the spot for b. Yes, so I've inserted everything and I've replaced all the a and b's. Now let's do the square numbers. Now negative 1 squared is what we're going to be doing. Now guys, negative 1 squared, anything squared, because even if we square a negative number, guys, we're going to get a double negative, aren't we? So no matter what number you square, it will always become positive. So it's a good idea to remember that. So this negative 1 squared, it's same as just doing 1 squared, which is going to be 1. Yes? And same with here, negative 2 squared. It's same as just doing 2 squared, the positive 2 squared, which becomes the 4, because double negatives make positive. And then this negative just follows down right here. So what's 1 minus 4, guys? It should be a negative number, isn't it, since 1 is less than 4. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3. That is the final answer for this question. Make sense, guys? All right, let's do question 6. A is negative 1, B is negative 2. Evaluate A plus B on a minus b. So it's a division, that fraction, isn't it? That's what the fraction implies. So again, guys, let's do the same kind of thing. Um, a plus b over a minus b. I replace the a with the blank spaces here and the b's with the blank spaces here. Again, I'm going to use um, brackets because there's negative numbers involved and I don't want that to confuse me. So let's replace the a's, guys. a is negative 1 over here, isn't it? So I put the negative 1 there and b is negative 2. So I've replaced the numerator, that a becomes negative 1, this b becomes negative 2 as given in the question. I've just replaced them. Now let's look at the denominator. This is the space for a, isn't it? So we know that a is negative 1, so we're going to put negative 1 in there. And they also tell us that 
B is negative 2. So this um, little black spot I'm going to replace with the negative 2. See, I just replaced everything. That would be the first step, guys. Don't do everything in your head. Write it down first like I did there. Okay, now look at this, guys. Between the brackets, there's two symbols. We've got a positive and we've got a negative. Same here, we've got a negative and we've got a negative, don't we? So we have to simplify the, um, the signs. We don't want to have two signs. So what does plus and a minus make, guys? You should remember this, that it makes a minus. And minus, minus a double negative, we know that is definitely a positive, isn't it? So that's what I did first. So I didn't calculate any values. All I did was simplify the signs. So plus minus makes minus double negative makes plus. So that's what I've done first. Now let's simplify each of the numerator and de denominator individually. So minus 1, minus 2 should become minus 3, isn't it? And minus 1 plus 2 becomes a positive 1. Now we don't like to keep anything over 1. Over 1, anything divided by 1 is itself. So we can just simplify this by writing it as minus 3 or negative 3 if you like to call it. So that is the final answer for this one.